In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can utilize the texture toolpath to create texture wall panels using the vectors that we created in the previous tutorial. If you missed this tutorial, I have linked the video in the related videos section of the tutorial browser, so you can go ahead now and create those vectors that we're going to be using in this video. In this video, we're going to show you how you can change the type of texture we create by allowing the software to randomize different cut depths for each of the vectors. So let's begin. So I'm going to file close on this and I'm just going to open an existing file and I'm just going to navigate through my tutorials folders to the vector textures folder and in the files folder we're going to find the vector underscore textures underscore drawing. Select that and press open. And before we begin we're just going to have a quick reminder of the vectors that we're going to be utilizing. So I'm just going to go up to the layers drop down, just going to turn off the wood grain for a moment. So you see this is our cutout pass, this is exactly one inch uh, less than the actual job dimensions on, e on both the width and the height, so it's 24 by 12. And then we created some repeatable wave patterns, so that's on the wave layer. Then we went ahead and created some that were on an angle, virtually the same as the ones that were on our original wave. And then we went ahead and created some swirl patterns. Now this utilized different spacing, so a randomized spacing between each of the vectors that we created using the Create Vector Texture tool. And then we went ahead and created a wood grain. Now this used a long wavelength and very minute amplitude, and we utilized a lot of noise while creating those vectors as well. As you can see, they're quite jagged in appearance. So to begin with, if I just press F on the keyboard just to put that back in zoom to fit, we're going to start with the basic waves. So if I just go to the layer drop down again, just hide the wood grain for a moment and just select the wave layer. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the toolpath tab and we're going to start utilizing the textured toolpath. But before we do that, we must always check before creating any toolpath the material setup form. So let's just go and press the set button here and just have a quick check just to make sure everything's okay. So we've got a thickness of material of three quarters of an inch. The toolpaths will be created from the lower left XY data position and we're going to be coming off the material surface. Now model position isn't relative to this, it's only when we're dealing with 3D objects and we have the rapid Z gaps above material that's all set at 0.2 and we have the Z gap starting at 0.8 of an inch. So I'm just going to drop this down a little to around about 0.3 of an inch above the material and I'm going to press OK like so. Now in the 2D view I'm just going to press F on the keyboard again just to put that back into zoom to fit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the vectors and then I'm going to go into the texturing toolpath. Now there are different ways we can actually use this texturing toolpath. We can use it either with vectors so we can use it so that we can vary the depth along each of the vectors with the ones that we select. Now to do that we need to select this option here or we can use it without any vectors to drive along and we'll basically we'll fill either a vector or the whole work area with randomized uh, cut depths across the whole area. Now we're going to want to use the first option so I'm just going to make sure that we have this selected and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and choose our tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the select button there and we're going to use the half inch ball nose tool for this first example. Just press OK. And we're going to have a start depth of zero. And then we get to where the magic happens, where we get to choose the minimum and maximum cut depths where the software can randomize in between those two values to create our random texture toolpath. So with our half inch ball nose, I want to go to a maximum depth of a tenth of an inch. And then we can use this slide underneath to choose that where to start the minimum depth from. So we can go all the way to the max, so 0 0.005, or we can go all the way up to virtually the same, so it'd act like a profile toolpath, so it'd be cut in all the way at tenth of an inch, as there's nowhere to randomize in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to randomize at the very max, so between 0 0.005 and 0 0.1 of an inch, and then all we do is just give it a name, so I'm just going to call this wave 0.5 BN and then just press calculate like so. And we can choose something nice like cherry to preview this in and then just preview the toolpath like so. 
And you'll see by looking through how each line has been cut at a different depth. Now if you turn it on its side you'll also see how the deepest line definitely is this one here and they all seem to cut in to one another nicely dependent on how deep each line has been cut. Now if we go towards the top here you may think that because this hasn't cut into the actual surface of the material very much here that may actually be a problem to some aesthetically. So what we can do actually to uh, remove that is if we go back into the toolpath by double clicking we can add a start depth and that means any of the randomized cutting depths won't start until we've got whatever we specify into the material. So I may just want to add in a small amount here to let's say 0 0.05 uh, into the material where we actually then start cutting and then we could even maximize the actual cut depth a little bit more so we could put it up to 0.15 and then calculate that toolpath reset and preview and you'll see that we've now got rid of any of the cuts where we actually were leaving material on the top surface of the material so let's move on now to a different set of vectors so I'm just going to close the preview toolpath form and go into the 2D view and it's going to hide the wave layer like so and then I'm going to move on to the swirl layer just make sure that's the selected layer like so and just highlight the vectors and then we'll head straight back into the texture toolpath like so and we'll use the same tool make sure that we've got use selected vectors as pattern like so and then we're just going to give this one a name of swirl so we're going to use all the same settings as they say from the last time we actually created a toolpath and it's going to call this swirl 0.5 bn like so just calculate that reset and preview and you'll see that by having the randomized spacing in the vectors themselves and all the different random cut depths that we've applied using the toolpath we've got now a much more natural organic flowing texture panel and we can change this again by just simply changing the shape of the tool so if I just go back into the texture toolpath and I'll just choose a half inch 90 degree v-bit like so use selected vectors as pan just make sure they're still selected in the 2d view use all the same settings just call this swirl v90 like so calculate reset and then preview again and you'll see that we end up with a really nice sharp looking natural organic uh, texture panel there which really does take advantage of the line space that we created and the different cut depths that we've enabled it to do within the texture toolpath itself. So finally we're going to go ahead and apply these techniques to the wood grain. So let's close the preview toolpath and just going to go into the drop down and just turn off the swirl layer and turn on the wood grain layer. It's going to make sure that they're selected and I'm going to go back into the texturing toolpath like so. Now to start with, I'm just going to try this with a quarter inch ball nose tool. As I know that by using the quarter inch ball nose tool I'll have enough uh, overlap between each of the gaps in here to get a nice looking uh, toolpath. I don't need to add any uh, start depth so I'm just going to take that back to zero. I'm going to make sure we've got this option selected to use the vectors as a pattern. And I'm not going to need to cut as, de uh, as deep this time. So I'm just going to take this back to 0.1 like so. And just to show you the difference between like a profile version of the wood grain and the texture toolpath, I'm actually just going to put this all the way to point 0.1 so it matches so we get the exact same output as what a profile toolpath would if we were going to create that with this. So I'm just going to call this wood grain and I'm just going to call it profile just so that we know which one this is. Just press calculate, reset that and preview. So this is the type of toolpath that we'd get if we were using this 2D toolpath. And now let's create a toolpath demonstrating the texture toolpath. So let's go back into the texture toolpath. Gonna use the same tool. Going to use the same vectors. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to make the minimum depth and let the software choose all the depths to see what we get from the texture. So let's just call this wood grain not point. 25 bn like so and then click calculate 
Now, I'm just going to turn off that so you can see what that looked like with uh, 2D Toolpath. And then I'm just going to turn that back on, reset the preview, and then preview. And now you'll see we're getting something completely different, so more, a lot more random and a lot more and, and deeper in cut and look as well. So we've got a more defined wood grain by utilising that texture toolpath. Now if we're after even more defined type of wood grain we can use a V-bit tool. So I'm just going to go back into the texture toolpath and just select ourselves a nice 90 degree V-bit like so. Use the same uh, vectors as the pattern and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some to the maximum depth. So I'm just going to make the maximum depth 0.15. And as it's a V-bit tool, I'm just going to make the start depth 0 0.05 like so. And then I'm just going to call this wood grain 0.5 V90 like so. Press calculate, reset, and preview. Like so, and now we've got a much more defined and in greater detail uh, wood grain panel that we've got here. Now, the beautiful thing about the texture toolpath, if I actually just go back into it and then recalculate it without actually changing any of the settings, you'll see we'll go from this to something completely different, like so. So, we're never ever going to end up with the same texture toolpath twice. So it's definitely worth bearing that in mind in case we do like one and we go to change it and recalculate it as we will not be able to get that back. Now there are some other things that we can do with the texture toolpath. And if we've got a 3D model that we've imported into the software or we've created the model if we're using Aspire, we can actually project uh, whatever the texture is that we've created onto that 3D model. So we can like sort of wrap it around a 3D surface and this can produce some really spectacular results. Now the last thing to create here would be the profile toolpath. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the visibility of all layers, go back to the 2D view, select the cutout vector and go to the profile toolpath, select the full depth of material. So I'm just going to type Z equals in there and just select my quarter inch end mill. Go machine around the outside of these vectors and I'm just going to call this cutout like so calculate, preview, and there we have our final vector texture panel created. And we can use that cutout pass on any of the toolpaths that we do create as they're all created in the same work area and workspace. And it will be used to finish off the repeating tileable texture that we created from the wave vectors that we used. And also to ensure we had full cut uh, around our panel. So I'll just quickly give you a demonstration to so just reset the preview and just preview the wave like so. And you'll see down towards the bottom we don't have a full cut and that's down to the fact that the actual vector pattern stops right on the edge of our job dimensions. So the actual pattern can't actually be followed through by the tool past the edge uh, so we don't get a full cut down the bottoms or around any of the edges. So the way we actually decided that we were going to conquer this is by creating a job size larger than the tile that we actually needed to create and then we actually created the cutout an inch in either side. So if we just now preview the actual cutout pass over this, I'll just preview that sorry, like so, and then we can disregard the waste material and if we zoom in you'll see that we actually now have a complete full cut from the tool. So now when we zoom out we do have a full complete panel like so. And with that that concludes this tutorial so thank you very much for watching.